WSU and the U of I campuses are less than seven miles apart, so it's no surprise there's a little bit of a friendly rivalry. It's not super clear how the rivalry game started, but our team dug into the archives and found a 1959 Lewiston Tribune article. It shows originally WSU had been coached to play rugby, but U of I played football. Somehow the two teams decided they wanted to play against each other, so they played an informal game in the spring of 1893 and then the first official Battle of the Palouse game was played in 1984. For 122 years, Pullman and Moscow would shut down so everyone in town could watch the game. And you can only imagine both towns have a lot of pride for their team. Originally, the rivalry started with football, but then it eventually expanded to basketball as well. And starting in 1938, it became a tradition for students from the losing school to walk to the winner's college and perform the victor's fight song. But that changed in 2016. At the time, the University of Idaho was in the FBS Sunbelt Conference. There were already discussions among both football programs if it was worth playing the game since the teams were in separate conferences. The conference decided not to renew their football contract beyond the 2017 season. Idaho ended up joining the Big Sky Conference in 2018, making them an FCS team. A game was scheduled for 2020, but it was of course canceled because of the pandemic. Now, for the first time in six years, the Cougs will face the Vandals on the gridiron at Martin Stadium. The school mascots bringing the friendly wager back. Joe Vandal and Butch T. Cougar says the loser has to walk home. So I guess we'll see. Last time we spoke, uh, did one of these one-on-ones. You were just getting hired. Now it's your first fall camp as the, the head coach. You're, you're the man. What's it been like? Well, I think the biggest thing is I tell everybody that it didn't just start August 3rd when we reported. I mean, this thing started January 1st of really just re-energizing our program. And the biggest thing we needed to do was just reunite everybody, right? We just talked about coming off of COVID. It was our first big off season that we were going into, normal rules, normal things. And we just needed to be more of a team. And I think that was important. The adversity that we overcame the year before, there's a lot of experience uh, that can be learned from that, you know? So now, what do we need to do as individuals and as coaches uh, to take our program to the next level? And it all started with hiring 22 new coaches. Uh, so the new wazoo is up, it's rolling, and there's a new energy about it. And then fall camp, just to have it, you know, exactly, you know, how we want it to as a, as a program is something that's really special. And it's player focused, um, and they've done a really good job of driving our culture and just really accepting our coaches and, and wanting to be great every Saturday. And you talked about the new Wazoo, obviously something that's been pretty big yeah. since you started this, this season here. Uh, just what does that stand for to you? Well, it really stands for just having a standard for the program, and that's being the best uh, in each and everything we do. And we talk about it on and off the field, and there's an accountability that comes with that. And I just want our guys to realize, you know, everyone's, you know, ceiling is different. OK, but we got to hold each other accountable to being the best each and every day. That's how we're the best team possible. And I talked about that energy. It's something that we have to have the moment we cross these doors. Right. No energy vampires. Right. Big body language. Enjoy what you do. And I think that's what our guys have really embraced. And it's about the process. Right. You win each moment you encounter in life. Right. And that's academics. Uh, that's obviously relational. And it's obviously in this building. If we try to be one and all each and every day. We can keep stacking days and we can accomplish big things. So uh, that's our main focus. And that's kind of the messaging that our players hear each and every day. Uh, when you come to new, obviously, it's your first full year as the head coach. When it comes down to that, most of the time, it's a coach coming from somewhere else. Coming yeah. in. Obviously, you, it's a different yeah. story. Yeah. Um, but does this feel like this program is yours sometimes it might take a little while for the turnover all that to get it going does this feel like it's completely yours right now 100 percent, you know because i think when you get an opportunity to just hire the the right people for the place is is that's where i all come back to and i tell our guys all the time i was very thorough on the front end you know so i know there's people in this foxhole with me right and and leadership isn't you know one guy just in charge of everybody right it's empowering leadership up and down the chain of command right so through the coordinators, through our coaches, through our scouting department, through our creative department. You know, there's a lot of things that go into that, right? But letting them 
you know, do their job within a singular vision, right? And I think our program is aligned, and I think that's one of my number one jobs, you know? So it, it is our program. I'll never say it's my program. It's our program. Uh, Washington State is bigger than Jake Dickard and always will be. It'll be here before and after me, you know? But what are we willing to do right now to leave Washington State in a better place than, than what we got it in? So. You know, those are the things that we're excited about and it is our program and we're ready to put our stamp on this era of Washington State football. And talking about your stamp, your defense, very good defense, continue yeah. to get better and better this year. A lot of returning starters. On paper, it looks like you guys will be pretty darn good on that side of the ball. Just uh, what's it been like being the head coach, not necessarily fully with the defense now? Yeah, well, I miss it. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm the first I'm going to start there. I miss the X's and O's. I'm a football guy. You know, I looked at one of my old call sheets the other day, and I was like, man, it just, it just gave me goosebumps because if you just remember those moments. Um, but it's an interesting dynamic within the team. You're at year three within a defense, and you're at year one of an offense, right? So what I'm excited about defensively is taking that next step. You know, we, we move from the doldrums to being a good defense, okay? It's even harder to keep elevating to be a great defense, right? But it all starts with hawking the ball. And I think that was the number one thing we did last year. Uh, takeaways will still be, um, you know, a priority for what we're gonna do and, and how we're gonna play. And I love what Coach Ward has done adding uh, you know, more of a aggressive front element to our defense. So it's a blend of a lot of things, you know, and, and you know, I trust Brian Ward. I think he's got the hardest job in the building, right? Taking over what the head coach used to do. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm just excited about that unit's growth because I think we got tremendous leaders and they have a really clean vision of what they need to do. I hear you talking about Coach Ward there, you know. Yeah. Uh, is, do you ever give him a hard time in any sorts or get, try to get your hands well, on I, the I give him a hard time because I was his GA, right? <laughs> I said, I remember how you treated me when I was a GA. Um, but, you know, it was, it's just good. Just, we've been a really good job of just sharing ideas back and forth because I'm a big believer if you're not evolving, you're not getting better, you're just stagnant, right? So the things that he brought that's different to our defense, I think, are things that are going to benefit our, our players, you know? So we, no one ever said, hey, why are we doing this? Because this is how we used to do it. No, let's, let's evolve, let's grow, let's get better. And I think he just understands how, you know, that preparation process is. And I think that's what makes this defense special. Yeah. Um, well, on the offensive side of the ball, you said just a little bit ago, kind of first year here, yeah. you get the package duo of Eric Morris and Cam Ward together. I imagine that has to help yeah. having the quarterback and the OC together. Well, I think there's no question. Like when you look at the whole group being on year one, you know, Cam Ward is really on his third season because he played that COVID spring season. But I think you're seeing a really big jump in his just progression within the offense. And he drives the bus now, right? He has a lot of freedom. Uh, but I think Coach Morris does a good job of making sure he understands, you know, where we want to land. But I think you're seeing that jump in Cam Ward, you're just seeing it at two different places. And he's done a great job of coming in here and working and earning the trust of this team. You know, the biggest thing I remind him is that, you know, besides me, he's the biggest decision maker in the program, right? And I trust and I believe in him uh, because he's one of those guys that's unique. He's not always going to do it the way you coach it to happen, right? Which is a great thing, but you can't put those type of special talents in a box, right? You got to take some of the good with the bad and know that I trust that he's going to go out there and, and get it done each and every day and because it's grounded on hard work. So I think that dynamic between those two is, is pretty special. That's a lot of pressure for a quarterback coming from, you know, kind of a smaller school to Pac-12 level. Do you think... He's got that type of personality. Well, there's one guy that can handle it, it's Cam Ward. I, I just say each and every day, he's just fun to be around because he's an ultimate competitor. And when you love the game that much and you spend that much time on the game, you know, he just has fun with it, right? So yes, he was built for this moment uh, from probably the time he was a little kid and he's taken everything in stride, but this is why he's here. Pressure is a privilege. Okay, Cam has earned this pressure, right? It's a privilege that he's put our program in the situation. So uh, enjoy it. And he doesn't need to be some hero, right? He needs to be what he's capable of being, use the weapons around him that he's never had to this type of level and things will work out and he'll have a successful season just like he did at UIW. What have your thoughts been on the offense so far? I know early camp, 
kind of working yeah. through things, but it seems like lately you've been complimenting them quite a bit. It seems like they've come a far way. Yeah, I think they had a great second half of the fall camp season. And you know, like I said, offense, defense, sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll sputter, you have your roller coaster days. They've been very much more consistent right over the last few weeks. And that's exactly where we want that group and their confidence level, level going as we get closer to game day. So um, the offensive line, I've, I've been really happy with Coach McGuire and the strides that that group has made. Um, and it doesn't have that solo talent that we've had in some other years, but I think when you play collectively, that's the sign of a good offensive line. And those are the steps that we need to continue to take to have ultimate success on offense. The first game approaching here. Yeah. Uh, it's a big one for people here in the area. Yeah. The first Battle of the Palouse since 2016. Yeah. Uh, what's it mean to you to have that game back? Well, I just learned the other day that the, the students used to walk back whoever lost, right? So that, that was pretty fun and exciting. We should bring that back, I guess. Um, but it was good. It's just when you live on the Palooza, it's such a unique area that we talk about to have two flagship institutions in this small agricultural part of the country is definitely a unique situation that you don't don't have very often, right. you know? And obviously having a big, bigger rivalry in the past, um, you know, I'd love, I'd love to play this game almost every year. Why not? Yeah. It's good for our fan bases, and it's an ex exciting environment that'll, that'll be out there on Giza Field, but excited to play this game again. Yeah, really cool tie to this game, too. Yeah. You and Coach Eck, yeah. you, got, you guys coached at two stops together, most yeah. recently South Dakota State. Uh, what's going to be like you guys now, first-year head coaches, playing against each other? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely unique. I, I'll <laughs> say the first thing is I, I consider Jason a friend. Period. This isn't a coach at acquaintance. Like he is a friend of mine, and uh, it's one of those weird directions that life takes you, right? You're you're both as your first time as a head coach. We knew we've always wanted to get in these positions. You never knew where it was going to be, and uh, you know to see him across on the sideline will be special, really, for both of us. Uh, I know him very well. He knows me very well. Uh, so, you know, so it'll be a, one of those moments that'll just kind of be hopefully really special for us and our families. We talked to Coach Eck just a little bit ago, and uh, he talked about championship game at you guys' first stop yeah, where yeah. you guys scored 13 points, or your defense held them to 13. They didn't score any, so you said, hey, He didn't bring that up. <laughs> he, he, okay, brought that. Okay, he brought okay. that up. He brought that he up. He said that's why you're at the Pac-12 right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's got a little more fire and in, in, in juice than I do. He's just a fun guy to be around. You know, yeah. I know that. But, yeah, we had a special 2014 season uh, making it to a national championship game together. And, uh, you know, one of those guys – you just you just stay connected to because you know that he he's a great football coach. He, he's a great leader. He's a great mentor, and he has a really bright offensive mind. Uh, just really bright. And I know our paths hopefully will cross again on the same staff as as we continue to move forward. But uh, yeah, I don't. Every once in a while, when we get together, I'll nudge him about getting shut out in the championship <laughs> game. But other than that, uh, you know, that was a special moment at that place. Yeah, that's cool. Especially because you guys are right down the street. That's now. right. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. Well, when we look at the season as a whole, I guess, what are your goals? What do you think this team can accomplish? You know, a lot of people ask me that. And the biggest thing, you know, I always come back to, and this has been a core belief of mine, is just, it's one game at a time. We preach process. We understand process. The best part, as I know, is this team can go out there and be 1-0 and each and every week, right? But you got to go earn that. And that's preparation. And then eventually on Saturdays, it meets execution, right? So we got to do our jobs better than our opponent each and every week. And we got to show up with a mindset of we need to go out there and earn it. So I'm excited about this football team. I'm excited for this season. I'll never put a ceiling on it, but the only thing I ever talk about is just stacking one and O's and that's daily and, and that can lead to big results. So we're excited to September 3rd, right? Really show the team, you know, that we are and, and how much hard work we put into it. Now, we talked a little bit about it off camera, how, it's like normal now. It feels like a yeah, normal season. It it's got to feel normal for the guys. What's, yes. Just what's that like to finally have a normal season? Well, I think you don't realize how normal it is until it's taken away from you, right? right? So, and I'm just talking about little things. I'm talking about the dining hall. I'm talking about being in the locker room. I'm talking about taking the, the guys to the pool and bowling <laughs> and just some of the fun things, yeah. you know, that we did in fall camp. Like, you don't realize how much you just miss those times. And I just sit back and I just watch, you know, and just... Man, I just we talk we call it creating collisions, right? That's how you create a football team is you get the running backs to talk to the D tackles and the corners to the old linemen and you gotta create those elements. So to be able to collide again and build trust in a football team, 
right? You don't just do that on the field, you do it behind the scenes. So to have everything back is just amazing. And, and more importantly, hopefully that leads to, you know, Giza Field being one of the best places to play in the Pacific Northwest. And I'm excited to get our fans back in that stadium and support these guys that have been working their tails off. Coach, obviously first season here as the head coach, How, how's everything going? It's going well. You know, again, I've been really uh, happy just how the players have bought into everything with the transition. I think they've been great to work with and uh, I've done what we asked of them. And the community is amazing. I think the, the Vandal family is strong and you know, it's a very passionate fan base. And I think that's part of what makes, you know, coaching at University of Idaho a great job. Yeah, this is actually going back to your roots. You started a full-time coaching here at Idaho. My, my, my first full-time gig. So my, my first full-time coaching job was here and then my, my first head coaching job was here. So I'm very... Uh, very fortunate, and that was a big part of coming back. I think it's nice to, to know what you're getting into. You're going someplace that you know about and you felt comfortable, your family liked living there. Mm -hmm. and I thought that really was a thing that uh, you know, made this job attractive to me. What is that like coming back all these years later? How much has changed, all that? You know, it's fun because you see a lot of familiar faces. You know, a lot of our boosters are the same boosters that were here back in, you know, 2004 when I got here the first time. But it's also neat seeing how the town changed. My wife was very excited there's a Target now. There was not a Target here last time we were here. So there's been some improvements as well. But uh, uh, the Kibbe Dome has been redone quite a bit. You know, it's, it's nice getting the natural light in there. It used to be real dark in there. Uh, but now getting that light in there is beautiful. So it's, it's good to see how the university has grown uh, over time but uh, it's also nice to have a lot of familiarity. Right, uh, I imagine for you, now the man in charge, have you like taken a step, I'm sure you have at this point, taken a step back and gone like, wow, my career's gotten me to this point. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very fortunate. You know, I, I, head coaching jobs aren't easy to get, so I'm, I'm very fortunate to have this job and I'm thankful for you know, coaches I've worked with in the past and especially players I've worked with in the past that put me in a position to, to get this uh, job. And, you know, it's a little bit like the challenge to you know, like our staff. I said, hey, you know, part of the reason I'm here is we played really well. You know, we beat Colorado State, your alma mater, last year <laughs> when I was at South Dakota State. We played Minnesota really tough a couple years ago, and those are you know, national TV games that people see. So I, I said, this is, you know, these, it's a great opportunity playing a team like Washington State, our first game for, the, for our assistant coaches who want to grow in their career. Uh, you know, these are the games where you can kind of make a name for yourself. And you just touched on it a little bit there. Big game to open the season, big one here, Battle of the Palouse, the first since 2016, actually. Uh, what are the jitters like, the feels like heading into this game? A big one to start. It, it's definitely a uh, different feeling going and being the head coach because, you know, when you're, when you're a position coach, uh, you know, you're in your silo of your position that you're worried about. Now, uh, when you're a coordinator, you're worried about the whole side of the ball. Now you're worried about everything that could go wrong in the game and making sure, you know, the kicking game is good and things like that. So, you know, definitely some jitters going into the first game. It's just a different experience. You're not, you're not used to it. Uh, you're making different kind of decisions during the game. You know, you're not calling the plays like an offensive coordinator, but you got to make the call. You know, are we going to go on fourth and one? You know, when are we going right. to uh, when are we going to pull out that uh, trick play and Coach Dickert? You know, that type of thing. So, uh, it's uh, it's different. It's different, but it's exciting and uh, you know, a new challenge and a new opportunity. And I always think that's when you when you challenge yourself, that's where growth happens. So excited about the opportunity. Yeah, what do you think this game means to the area? Obviously, a rival game of some sort, you know? I, I think it's great. You know, when I was here, we played it every year, the three years I was here previously. So I, I think it's a neat game to have, uh, you know, across the Palouse. And, you know, our players see these guys around town. You know, the, you'll see, uh, uh, you know, people from Washington State coming over to the restaurants in Moscow and things. So there's definitely some bragging rights there. And, uh, you know, such a unique game to have a, a game that's eight miles away. You know, I think there's uh, some rivalry in Arkansas in Division Two where they're like across the street from each other and they walk to the away game. But I think at the Division One level, this is one of the most unique you know, rivalries being that close. And uh, now that we're a, a you know, different subdivision, it's a little, a little different. We're spotting them some scholarships and things, but I still think it's a great game. I'd love to play them, maybe not every year, but every other year. And I think we have, we have them on the schedule a lot coming up because it's such a uh, great game for our fans and our players so their families can see and play. And I think it's something for our, our fan base to get excited about with the Battle of the Palouse. Right. Uh, obviously, big transition here. A lot to turn around here at the program for you, and this will be your first game at the helm. Um, what's your goal for the team in this game? The biggest thing I want is to keep getting better. You know, again, we the, we got to control what we can control and, and keep improving. You know, again, I think when you're playing a game, and anytime time you're, you're at a FCS versus a Power 5, you know, type game, uh, you got to worry about how you play. And, uh, you know, again, if they... 
uh, you know, if we play good, clean football and they happen to beat us because they're better that day, I think we can, you know, we can live with that and build on it. You know, we don't want to beat ourselves. We got to make sure that we're sound. We're not turning the ball over. We're not having foolish penalties, especially pre-snap penalties. Uh, we're not having busts that give big plays because, you know, we go the wrong way or we're out of the gap or we block the wrong guy. Uh, you know, again, if they, if they beat us and win some one-on-one -on -one battles, I think we can live with that. But we want to make sure we play good, clean football and we're improving and continuing to get better because I think that's the, the, the quest in our, in our season. The nice thing in, uh, you know, FCS, it's not like the FBS playoff where you got to be one of the top four teams to make the playoffs. You know, 24 teams make our playoff bracket. So if you can keep improving throughout the year and making progress, you can set yourself up to be one of those 24 teams. How important do you think this game is for you to start off on the right foot with the team here? Are, is there, are you putting pressure on that, or is this more a, hey, we'll see how it goes? Well, you, we want to play well. Like I said, I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's your first game. And the first games in football, I think, are very tricky just because you, uh, and that's whether you're assistant coach, head coach, because when you're, when you're practicing, you know, you're practicing, uh, you know, good versus good. A lot of times your first string O versus your first string D. So, you know, if one side's winning, you know, if the offense is beating the defense, your question is, is it because our offense is really good or is because our defense isn't great? You know, so uh, in the first game, you kind of find out. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so it's back and forth. So I think there's a little bit of an unknown there going into the game. You know, again, I do want to, uh, I want to make sure we're improving and that we're playing clean football. Uh, you know, again, I'll be disappointed if we if we play very sloppy in, in you know in the first game. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say this is a must-win game. You know, I think any any uh, I look at this more as an opportunity. I think we have an opportunity to do something great. You know, no one's going to pick us to win this game. You know, we're an underdog, uh, and I kind of like that. I like when you're uh, you got everything to gain and nothing to lose. I think you can be loose and go play free and, and go play your best football and see what happens. Yeah, well, talking more about this game, there's a tie. Uh, head coach Jake Digger and yourself, you both coached together at two stops in college, most recently South Dakota State. Uh, what's it going to be like going up against him now that you're both in charge? Uh, it'll be fun. You know, we were, we were just texting the other day, and uh, you know, he's he's a good friend. Uh, you know, we had a lot of success together. You know, at, uh, in 2014 when we were at uh, Minnesota State Mankato, uh, he was the D coordinator, I was the O coordinator, and we uh, you know went to the national championship game. Uh, now we lost the national championship game 13 nothing, and so their defense played pretty well. So that's probably why he's a Pac-12 head coach, and I'm an FCS head coach right now. But uh, he's a good ball coach, and uh, we—I you know, was part of bringing him on. We, we had coached against him uh, in 2013. He was the D coordinator at Augustana College in South Dakota, and I was the uh, you know O-line O coordinator at Minnesota State. And he played us really tough. You know, we beat him that year. But uh, they defended us so good after when we had an opening at D coordinator that year, I told our head coach, that we should look at this Dicker guy. He did a good job at the defense. And then we got reconnected at South Dakota State, and uh, we, we went 7-1 and one in the conference, won the Missouri Valley in 2016. It was the first time they'd ever won the Missouri Valley. So he's a good ball coach. You know, I'm not surprised by his uh, you know, rapid ascent. I was uh, cheering for him you know, last year. Uh, the nice thing about those Pac-12 after dark games is when you're coaching in the Midwest, you know, you can uh, relax at night and, uh, you know, have a beer and watch their game after your game's <laughs> over. And uh, we were cheering for him when he was the interim coach and uh, very happy he got the opportunity. And uh, after September 3rd, I'll be rooting for him. No, no favors on September 3rd, but after September 3rd, I, uh, I'm, I'm a, uh, a fan of theirs. <laughs> Any fun trash talk going on between the two of you? Well, he did. He asked, he, he told me that uh, if I told him, who our starting quarterback is, he'd, he'd uh, tell me who his is. And I, I said, I think we can both figure that out. Uh, you, you know, I probably could figure it out a little better. Yeah. They're, uh, you know, they're, I think their quarterback has a nicer car than I have with his deal. So I figured uh, I, I was pretty easy to decide who their starting quarterback was. But uh, so, yeah, there'll be, there'll be a little friendly trash talk back and forth. But uh, uh, it's fun. A lot of respect for him. He's a great football coach. And uh, uh, excited. Kind of a, a, a ironic and unique thing to have my first job uh, as a head coach against him. It's right. kind of nice because, you know, head coaches usually always meet at the 50-yard line and talk before the game. And, like, if we had Alabama, I don't know what I'd, me and Saban would talk about. So at least, you know, <laughs> him and I are going to have some stories to, like, tell and uh, talk back and forth because uh, I, yeah. I, I don't know what I'd talk to Nick about. <laughs> I think it's safe to say Cam Ward's starting over there. At yeah, WSU. I feel pretty confident with that. He's a good player. He's a good but player. Speaking of the quarterback, just offense in general, you know, you led one of the best offenses in the FCS last year. Um, how much of a transition has that been bringing it here? I imagine it's taken some time. It's taken some time. I, I, think we, I think we greatly improved this fall camp on offense, you know, and uh, our defense is very good. And there were some times in spring ball where the offense kind of took, took their lumps. You know, we had, we had a practice this fall camp where we had two long drives against the defense, touchdown drives, like 80-yard drives. And I, uh, you know, complimented our offensive coordinator. It was, that was great to see those two long drives. And he said, well, 
in the spring game, we had 18 possessions and we scored one touchdown. So yeah, going going two for two on touchdowns was was a good sign this fall camp. So I think we're we're improving on offense. Uh, and again, offense is timing. It's it's everyone being on the same page. It's getting reps. So I think that's you know to be expected as we get more reps there. But I think we've definitely improved on offense. I think we're good on defense. So that's you know that, that challenges our offense to get better. But uh, happy by the growth that we've had. And speaking of growth, uh, just from your perspective, big picture here. How long do you think it'll take to get the program where it's it feels like yours and where you want it to be? Well, I, I feel like it's 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 ours already, and you know I, I tell our team, you know, I got a five-year contract, but our, our seniors don't. You know, they, they got one year, so we're we're trying everything we can this year to to get this team to be a playoff team. And uh, you know, again, I think you know, obviously we have some games that we're going to be heavy underdogs, like in the Washington State and Indiana game, uh, and then there's a few teams who are you know on the road in our conference that are tough games, but. A majority of our games, we're going to play teams just like us, you know, who aren't, who aren't a whole lot different. And they're going to be games that come down to one possession and, uh, you know, playing good, clean football and executing and making the other team beat you, not beating yourself, uh, you know, I think will make the difference in those games. So, uh, you know, we're hoping to do it quick. I'm not going to be discouraged or, you know, or devastated if we're not a playoff team this year. I, I want to make sure we have growth and that we're continuing to get better because there's a lot of things, you know, we can't control how teams play against us. We can only control ourselves. So I, I want to see growth. I want to see us continuing to get better. Uh, I, I certainly believe we are going to turn the tide and make this program a power in the uh, in the FCS and in this Big Sky Conference. It's a matter of time. I, I haven't got the definitive time, but I'm impatient, so we're going to try as, as hell to make it right away this year. <laughs> How great could the Kibbe Dome be, you know? How pack I, it in I, there. I, I have great memories. You know, the last year I was here in 2006, we played Boise State at home, and I know, we, I know we're not going to have Boise State at home ever again, but uh, <laughs> just the, the environment in there and how loud it was, packed house, you know, it might be for Montana now instead of Boise State, but uh, that's something to aspire to. And again, I hope we can continue to get the, the fans excited and make, uh, you know, make that must-see, you know, TV or must-see event to be there uh, on Saturdays in the Palouse and the Kibbe Dome and get it, get the the dome rocking. At a place like this, you know, you you played top-notch college football at Wisconsin, played in a Rose Bowl. Um, how much does that help you talking to players or earning their respect immediately? You know what? I, I I don't know if it has a huge emphasis. You know, you know Coach Dicker played at uh, Wisconsin Stevens Point. You know what I'm saying? And he's doing there. So I I don't think so. I think number one, you know, guys want to know that you care about them. Guys want to know that you're invested in them. Guys want to know that that uh, you're committed to making them better and helping them. Uh, you know, I, I try to stress and want all our coaches and our program to understand. You know, we if we didn't have players, we didn't have student athletes, we wouldn't have jobs. You know, that that's we're here for them. It's not. Uh, it's not there was coaches sitting around, so they you know decided we needed to have a football team. It's there was a football team, there was a university, and we had student athletes, and then now we need coaches. So uh, I, I think that's more the, the credibility, know, knowing that you care about them and spending time with them. Uh, we spent a lot of time working on the relationships outside of football, and uh, you know I think we're really here to mentor them, to try to help them go to some place that they haven't been able to go on their own so far. And we've talked a lot as a team about championship behaviors. You know what. You know, you know, champions act like champions before they're champions. You know, you don't start winning championships and then figure out how to act. You got to start displaying championship behavior, and then the championships come after you do that. So that's that's been a lot of education of kind of educating our guys what are championship behaviors, and, and when they're not displaying them, we're correcting that and trying to get it fixed. Right. Does I know your background, obviously offensive lineman. I know you've coached O line a decent amount leading up to this position. Do you uh, ever lean towards those guys in practice? <laughs> I, I, I do like going down there, and yeah. I, I think uh, you know. I think my job as a, as a head coach, I got to coach our coaches a lot, and uh, you know, Coach Booth probably gets sick of me because I probably coach him more than the other guys, <laughs> just because that's my area of expertise. But uh, uh, you know, I, I do think you know having a good O line is very important. I think there's certain you know, all, all positions are important, but you know, the offensive line, the quarterback, the defensive line, I think those ones are. A little bit more important. So, uh, you know, having a good old line and rebuilding that here and getting good in the old line, I think, can be a big part of our success over the years. And uh, uh, you know, it took it took a while to do that at uh, South Dakota State, but you know, probably by my fifth year there, the fifth and sixth year, we were very, very good in the old line. And that, uh, you know, those two years went to the national championship game, went to the semifinals. So I think that can be a big part of it. But uh, you know, I try to practice to not just stay with them. You know, I want to go around and make sure that. Uh, you know, I'm seeing the DBs and their individual drills and with the D-line, I'm seeing the running backs because I, I know when I was a player, I always felt when the head coach came around, when Coach Alvarez, who I played for at Wisconsin, you know, when he when he came by to watch your drills, the intensity picked up of the drills. So I, I think it's important the whole team feels that, uh, you know, I'm the head coach of the whole team. I'm not, uh, you know, biased towards one position. <laughs> All right, Coach, I think last question I got for you. 
What's been your favorite part of the job? The players, you know, spending time with the players, you know, probably my favorite time so far was, uh, you know, after the spring game, we put four guys on scholarship who were walk-ons. And I was a walk-on in college, who weren't a scholarship, and that's something that, uh, you know, I'll never forget. Uh, you know, Coach Alvarez pulled me into his office with another guy, so it wasn't it wasn't the big hoorah. Now now you now it's more of a hoorah when you give guys a scholarship. So we did it with the whole team afterwards, and just seeing how happy the team was as they celebrated with the guys, because uh, again, that's yeah, you know, it's my job as a coach is help help guys do something that they they haven't done before and help help them go to a place they haven't been able to go on their own. And uh, I don't know of a better example of that than a guy who comes here paying his own way and then earns a scholarship through time. So that's been my favorite part. But I uh, I hope if you ask me that and couple months I'm going to talk about you know moments after great wins with those players as well celebrating with them after games.